Hey guys, I've been thinking about the video I made a few days ago about loving your neighbor as yourself and how Jesus literally fulfilled that when he came uh, by making the way for us to be where he is now. But I was thinking about another biblical character, Joseph, actually. Um, and for those of you who maybe not don't know the story, basically Joseph was the one of the last sons of Jacob, but he was the firstborn son of his favorite wife, Rachel. And as a young lad, he had these dreams that his father and his brothers uh, would bow to him um, as sheaves of wheat, as stars. There were different imagery that he had in his dream, but basically that his family would be servants to him. And he got rebuked by his dad. His brothers became jealous to the point that at one point they seized an opportunity and they sold Joseph into slavery. Uh, he became a slave in Egypt, but he still had the favor of God. He still had the blessing of God. His master in Egypt eventually made him head over all of his household, basically the chief manager, overseer of Potiphar's house. And then Potiphar's wife basically falsely claimed that she was sexually abused, tried to get Joseph to sleep with her. He rebuffed her, so she lied about it, got him sent to prison. So it looked like it was going good, then all of a sudden not so good. But in prison, Joseph still remains faithful. Um, in Psalms, it actually says that the word tried him. Um, in other words, that it was a season of testing. Not that God was tempting him, but that the word was, was testing, was testing Joseph. And the best way I can describe this, it's how can that happen if God doesn't tempt anyone? It's like Mark 4 talking about the ground, right? The ground doesn't tempt the seed, but the seed does test the ground. In other words, is this ground going to be worthy or suitable for this seed to grow into a fully mature plant that can bear fruit? I, I think that's a great way of thinking about how it talks about in Psalms, how the Word of God tested Joseph. It wasn't that the Word of God was tempting Joseph, trying to, trying to make him to stumble. It was just that the Word of God was testing the seed of the, the soil of Joseph's heart, so to speak, to see if he, it was suitable for the Word to bear fruit. Um, and that's basically what happened is he, Joseph proved himself faithful, even in prison, got out of prison. He was interpreted a dream for Pharaoh and was made second in command of Pharaoh himself, overseeing the entire nation of Egypt. And that was amazing. This, the faithfulness of God, how the faith of Joseph being faithful and sticking through it, even through seemingly impossible scenarios, opened the door for him to... God used it for his good, and he found himself at the second in command of, at that time, the most powerful nation on earth. But I have a question. I, I, I was thinking about this, is after all that, that's when Joseph's family showed up because of the famine that was going to come throughout all the land. Um, through Joseph's leadership, Egypt was prepared. They had prepared um, during seven years of plenty so that they would be ready for the seven years of famine that were to follow. Um, and they were prepared. And so in Israel, in Canaan land, where Jacob and his family were, they weren't prepared. So eventually they went down to Egypt to buy food. And Jake, Joseph, when he saw his family, had an opportunity. He, um, he could have said, nope, you're, you're being kicked to the curb. He still kind of messed with them a little bit. Um, you know, just kind of got back at him a bit. But eventually he had mercy on his brothers, showed himself to them, and and provided them with food and actually uh, land in Egypt for them to shepherd their flocks and raise their families. And as a result, at the end of Joseph's life, he got the lion's share of blessing from his father. Um, an excellent blessing, a blessing that surpassed basically all of the, all of the other sons as far as just being blessed. Um, and his sons, two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, also were blessed by their grandfather Jacob, and are considered two tribes of Israel. Um, Joseph only being one person, but his sons are considered, were the tribes that took up the inheritance, and he's the only patriarch that got basically two shares of inheritance in the allotment of the land of Israel, being divided between his sons Ephraim and Manasseh. So he was super blessed, um, very favored. But the question I was thinking is, what if Joseph had not shown mercy on his family. In other words, what if he had faith, he was faithful, he made it to the second in command in Egypt, and he was satisfied with that. He was good. It's like, well, 
thank God, you know, my family hates me. Uh, they sold me into slavery, but, you know, look, God has seen me through, and here I am, second in command in Egypt. I have a wife. I have kids. I'm well taken care of. I'm blessed. Um, and then when his family showed up, he's just like, screw you guys. I don't care. Just fend for yourselves. What would have happened? Would he still be blessed? Would he still have been as blessed? Would he have gotten the blessing of his father, Jacob, at the end of his life? Jacob would have still thought he was dead. Um, would his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, have gotten those two shares of allotment for the physical land of the promised land, Israel? Probably not. You know, what would have happened to Joseph had he not shown mercy on his family? Would his own family have been forgotten in the land of Egypt if he had chosen to not remember his own family and chose to forget his family in Israel? Would his own family, over the course of time, just assimilated and been forgotten in the land of Egypt? It's quite possible. You know, it, as, as interesting as Joseph's life is, and as much as God blessed him, and as amazing as his faithfulness and his faith was to go through all the things he went through, I think that, in a lot of ways, the most important thing Joseph ever did was walk in love. The most important thing Joseph ever did was have mercy on those who hurt him, have mercy on his own family that sold him into slavery. Um, because faith works through love. It was, it was the blessing, yes, that, that got Joseph where he was, but Joseph had enough mercy in him that it, was, it showed the character of Joseph. That would Joseph had made it as far as he did if he was full of bitterness and gall? You know, would he have been the same faithful Joseph? That, that made it through being falsely accused, that would have made it through being in prison for years um, after being sold into slavery by his brothers. I, I would say that it was the very fact that he was merciful, that that was the most important thing Joseph did, along with walking by faith. The fact that he showed mercy on his brothers was the very thing that culminated, brought to completion, brought to the culmination, the blessing that God was working in his life that allowed him to have the blessing of his father, that allowed his sons to have the blessing of Jacob um, and have a place of respect, honor, and notability among his own brothers, that allowed his prophecy to come to pass of his, uh, and his dreams to be fulfilled of his brothers and his family bowing down to him. None of that would have happened had he not had a heart of compassion and decided to have mercy on the people that hurt him so many years before.